therefore for the government to get involved and to recognize the ability of this industry to foster development uh, within the community. Um, most of the regulation that exists in Kenya today is done by the BCLB, um, the Betting Control Board, uh, which really looks at the gambling side of the industry. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that at Siku Games, we actually are an anti-gambling uh, organization. We started in response to the sports betting uh, and and bet pesa, uh, sport pesa that was around uh, when we started um, and trying to bring youth out of that and wean them off of it uh, into a different form of uh, dealing with their boredom, you know, through uh, that dopamine hit, but doing it without the gambling addiction. Um, other countries like India, um, particularly in Hyderabad, the state of Hyderabad, have passed laws to support what's called skills-based gaming, uh, which are anti-gambling fundamentally, uh, but still control the industry and help it to grow uh, in a safe way for everybody. Uh, a lot of the media focus has been on what you were calling the gambling dens. Mm. Um, we see that as a tiny, tiny piece uh, of this industry. As the Beast was saying, you know, the, the cost of the consoles and those gaming PCs are out of the reach for the average Kenyan, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's why 99% of our industry is mobile focused. We're very much on the smartphones and creating content and games for people's phones uh, and, and content that is socially beneficial, not uh, deleterious. Okay. Um, what sort of support would you, uh, if, if you were to have a seat with government officials, because right now, you know, you're saying you are, um, you know, sort of under, you know, the betting control and licensing board, where would you see yourself um, fitting best? And what sort of support do you think government should, and you know, basically paying attention because many people say, oh, you know, it's, it's just games huh? and it's, it's for lazy people who are behind their phones or, or, you know, on their screens a lot of the time. What sort of support do you need? Where do you think you are best situated within, you know, the government structure to get the right support that would be required? Sure. No, I think it's the opposite of, of the laziness. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think this is a real powerful uh, engine for economic development in the country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we saw just last week Electronic Arts spent $1.3 billion, that's with a B, billion U.S. dollars to buy a game developer of one game. Mm -hmm. um, so this has huge potential within Kenya to make Kenya a real powerhouse across Africa. And so we'd like to see it really seen as that economic tool and not something that needs to be tamped down or controlled um, because it has really potential for good. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, thanks for that. Uh, just a quick one because, um, and I'll take this also as your final words. In terms of funding, um, you know, talk to us about that because this is, you know, you're using software, you're, I mean, there's, there's quite a bit that goes into this in terms of investment. How easy is that to come by? So it's definitely getting easier at the moment. There's some great funders and VCs that are coming into the market, particularly on the angel investor side. Uh, groups like Keppel Africa, uh, Sherpa Ventures, uh, that are starting to really invest in the industry in Kenya and really across the continent. Um, and so I think for people who are just starting out today, particularly if you have some sort of a business background and you definitely need a business plan, uh, there is funding available. Uh, Google has just announced a huge startup fund uh, just in the last week for for uh, black founded um, new ventures yeah. uh, in Africa, particularly in the gaming industry. So there's money available for sure. Okay, thank you uh, for that. Jay Shapiro, CEO, founder uh, of Usiku Games. Good to hear from you on that. Uh, Bavana Drang, the CEO of the Esports Federation in Kenya. I guess the same question as we've asked Jay, uh, the regulation, the sort of support, because everybody seems to look at this industry and says, well, it's just, and yet we have sports federations, and maybe one day we'll have a Kenyan KPL. I don't know on, on, uh, on the esports federation of Kenya. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the issue of regulation, uh, okay, it's becoming a bit of um, you know something that really needs to be dealt with uh, as, as as soon as now. And um, uh, so there, there, there are a couple of you know ideas that we put in place to make sure that you know we can now begin to craft some regulations for these there do exist um, 
different uh, parts of the government they also do a little bit of their own regulations you know like for instance if you're developing um, educational games like what uh, Mr. Shapiro does then yeah. you have to go to KCD to approve those right. uh, the criteria of approval are not really good yeah. I could say that you know mm -hmm. all these things need to be streamlined and, um, and, 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 and also now there's the issue of uh, betting and control board betting and control board wants to jump into an area which is not theirs yeah. you know and that has brought a lot of confusion. Uh, just the fact that we seem to share the word gaming. Yeah. Like Dennis in the beginning was yeah. describing the difference, what, what gaming is and the, mm -hmm. the different terminologies within gaming. Gaming is purely an esport word. Mm -hmm. You know, the betting control board guys came in, drew that on their side, and, and you know. Yeah. Or they so, saw so some money in the industry. There, and yeah, then, yeah, you know, yeah. Course, and yeah. then just pulled in right. that. But they, they should not be involved in this. And actually, this is where the difference comes in. When you're betting, is 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 a game of chance. Is you gambling? You're taking chances with it. Uh -huh. When you're doing e-sport, is a game of skill. E-sport is a sport. Is a sport like soccer, like you know. And, and, and actually, betting control board, they have a little bit of place where they also come in, in the eSports. Yeah. For instance, if now I roll out the eSports National League, uh, then now they can come and use that In case there's people who now want who to now do place bets yeah, on that. Place bets okay. on that. But, okay. but not, not that they should be involved from the word go right. when anybody is trying to partake of, uh, of eSports. Okay. So that's, that's, that's where the, the confusion has been. Um, uh, so currently, as a federation, we, we're coming up with the charter. We've involved uh, a couple of law firms just trying to help out with this. And uh, Dennis, I'll, I'll really encourage you to continue developing the, 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 the law aspect of, uh, of e-sporting. Because mm. actually there's very little, even not just with e-sport alone, but mm. sports law, I think a lot of people don't, don't, mm. don't study that. They don't partake of that. Yeah. And so it become an issue. So it's something I'll encourage that you know you, you do a lot a, lo a lot of that. So so on issues of regulation, we're trying to really yeah. work on that. You know, it will take a little bit of time, but but eventually we'll, we'll be able to get it right. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks uh, for that, Dennis. Um, then you know you get the final word on that as well as um, I know you'd wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, the breakdown of the course. Uh, just uh, your final thoughts on that. Okay. Um, so, uh, the course itself is divided into three. We first of all start off with a certificate program that is about nine months uh, and three months of uh, two months of internship, and then graduate to the diploma program, which is again another nine months and then the three months of internship, and then the final year, you, ha you have the opportunity to uh, either continue doing it here or you can go ahead to France with the main Rubica campus to take it up. Um, that is if, of course, your grades are good enough. And also to support what um, has been mentioned about the things that government could do, is just to be able to facilitate um, the organizations for funding. Because nowadays, even for the film sector, they cannot get funding from a, a bank because this creative IP is not something that they still consider yeah. as, as collateral. So that would be really, really helpful. Even um, passport issues or immigration challenges that come up with esports players coming into the country. It was a problem um, in 2018 when we had a tournament here yeah. and some guys couldn't come because they were refused access okay. in. Why? And because they were asked what they were coming to do? Yeah, they were asked they what said, they're coming to do and they came <laughs> for they an esports, esports tournament and, they were, asked and they, were what? they were told no. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So such things. Um, and, and then uh, finally, get a place where we can get get it get some rebates this digital service tax was a huge hit for us mm. we are an infant industry and yeah. yet you're already taxing something that we are beginning mm. we've just started in the education section mm. and already we are having several challenges there you can't teach when you uh, a degree course when you don't have a master's so that becomes already a challenge so if they even scholarships that are going to help people go study in their masters and their PhDs to be able to craft out um, the laws, the policies that would work, then it would be really a big boost to the, uh, to all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Great, and that's that's a really good place uh, to leave it. Um, well, I have all of you um, here, and we'll be sharing this feedback with Brian Dianga as well. Jay, I hope you can still hear me, um, and you, um, Bavan and Dennis. Um, this is feedback we've
we've received from a director who's watching the show, a director mm -hmm. of the Betting Control and Licensing Board, mm -hmm. who says she is listening and will be reaching out to each and every one of you to particularly understand the needs of that. That is the impact awesome. of business awesome. now. <laughs> so thank you all of you um, for helping me understand and helping me learn. And so now when I'm trying to sleep and um, I'm playing the crossword puzzle, I kid you not, I, you know, I have the crosswords and it's, it's the thing, it's probably <laughs> the last thing I do before I go to sleep. At least I know I am benefiting an industry <laughs> to a yes. greater extent. And it's not just idling. I'd like to read a little bit more of uh, the feedback that we're getting from, um, from our viewers who are watching the show. Jacob Abere Matlala says, gaming is a good investment for computer software development, but it's only associated with idling, gambling, and low lower performance in majority of the industries that use computers and results delivery like accounting and security. Um, however, uh, we are first learning that uh, things are very different uh, from, from that. Um, and then uh, there's another one here, ADMI, which uh, offers the Rubica course saying, um, you know, they realize there's no place in East and Central Africa that people can learn how to create games. Um, therefore, partner partnering with Rubica and bringing the video development courses in Kenya and you've been sufficiently challenged to then take a look at you know esports law and to incorporate that as well and you know of course uh, some of the outtakes from that 65% of those who play games are women and they're of middle yeah. age <laughs> <laughs> that is a very interesting finding from the show today what uh, a learning experience we've had of a multi-million shilling industry in the country. Many thanks to all of my guests, Jay, Bavan, Dennis. Uh, Dennis the Beast, we thank you as well for making the time here for us on the show today. And indeed, you'll be hearing from the Betting Control and Licensing Board. That's what we do here, aiming you know, to give impact to the SME sector. All right, so that is it for the show today. Remember, you can keep interacting with us. The hashtag is business now. We'll see you again next week where we focus on yet another aspect for SME. Thank you, and thank you to you, Jay. We see you waving. Asante sana. Take care. Bye-bye.